In this video, we're going to cover examples that involve ring expansion. So let's say we have this particular alkyl halide and we're going to react it with water. What is the major product of this reaction? Now the first thing we need to do is determine what type of mechanism are we dealing with here. SN1, E1, SN2, or E2. So what we have here is a secondary alkyl halide. The carbon that bears the bromine atom is attached to two other carbon atoms, making it secondary. And we have a protic solvent. These conditions favor the SN1 reaction. Now in the SN1 reaction, the first step is the leaving group is going to leave. And we're gonna get a secondary carbocation intermediate. Now, will this structure rearrange? What would you say? Can we form a more stable carbocation intermediate through rearrangement? The answer is yes. If you have a five carbon ring, if you could expand it to a six carbon ring, you're gonna create a more stable situation. Six carbon rings are highly stable, so if you have them, they're not going to rearrange. But if you have a five carbon ring, it can expand to a six carbon ring. And likewise, if you have a four carbon ring, it can expand to a five carbon ring. Now, let's label the carbon atoms. Let's call this carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the bond between carbons one and five will break. 4 and 5 can break too, but we're going to use 1 and 5. You'll get the same answer regardless of which bond you choose. Now, when, carbon, when that bond between carbons 1 and 5 break, those electrons, they're going to be used to connect carbons 1 and 6. So what we're going to get is a 6 carbon ring. This is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now carbon 6 has a methyl group. Now where should we place the positive charge? Should we place it on carbon 1, 6, or 5? What would you say? Now looking at the situation that we have here, we lost the bond between carbons 1 and 5 and then we regenerated a bond between carbons one and six. So carbon one, it lost the bond, but it got it back, so it's good. Carbon six, it gained the bond, so it's gonna lose the positive charge. Carbon five, it lost the bond, but it didn't get it back, so carbon five is going to have the positive charge. So what we have here is a secondary carbocation adjacent to a tertiary carbon. Whenever you have a situation, a hydride shift will occur. So this hydride is going to move, it's going to glide towards that carbocation. So now the hydrogen is here, and this carbon lost the bond so it's going to have the positive charge now. In the next step, water, the solvent, is going to react as the nucleophile, making this a solvolysis reaction. And we're going to get this. Now we're going to have another step. We're going to use another water molecule to remove the proton, giving us an alcohol. So what we have here is 1-methyl cyclohexanol. So that's going to be the major product for this reaction. Now let's work on another example problem. 
try this one. So this time we're going to have a four carbon ring with a bromine atom, just like before. And let's use a different solvent. We'll use methanol in this example. Go ahead and try that problem. By the way, for those of you who want more practice problems on SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to put a practice test there for those of you who are interested. Now what we have here is a tertiary alcohol halide. Now, this carbon is attached to three other carbon atoms. So it's not going to be an SN2 reaction, it's going to be an SN1 reaction. And we have a protic solvent. In this example problem, the leaving group is going to leave. That is going to be the first step. And so we're going to get a tertiary carbocation. But because we have a four carbon ring, we know it's going to expand into a five carbon ring. The positive charge is one carbon away from the four carbon ring. So this is going to be a one carbon expansion. Let's call this carbon one, two, three, four, five. So we could break the bond between carbon one and two or carbon one and four. Let's break this bond. So when that bond breaks, those electrons are going to go towards carbon five. So we're going to get a five carbon ring. Let's call this one, two, three, four, and five. Now carbon five is attached to two methyl groups. But now where is the positive charge? Carbon five gained a bond, so it's going to lose the positive charge. Carbon four lost the bond, but got it back. Carbon one lost the bond, didn't get it back. So carbon one is going to have the positive charge. Now, notice what we have here. We have a secondary carbocation next to a quaternary carbon. So we're not going to get a hydride shift, but we're going to get a methyl shift. This methyl group is going to move towards the carbocation. Now, this carbon atom, it lost the bond, so it's going to have a positive charge. At this point, we can take methanol and react it with the carbocation. Now that we have a tertiary carbocation with a five carbon ring. And we don't have to show the methyl groups. Now in the last step, we're going to use another solvent molecule in an acid-base reaction. It's going to act as a base, removing this proton. So our end product is an ether. So that's it for that problem. 